This video is part of my Wireshark Packet Analysis and Ethical Hacking course. You need to know Wireshark if you wanna be a good network engineer or you wanna be an ethical hacker. In this video, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks with regards to Wireshark. Make sure that you know how to use Wireshark filters. In this video, we're going to discuss Wireshark filters. I'm gonna show you some options with regards to filtering traffic using Wireshark. Have a look at this playlist if you wanna see other videos that are part of this series. Okay, let's get started. Now when capturing traffic off the wire, you'll be capturing all kinds of traffic. Wireshark display filters allow us to filter what we're seeing. So in other words, rather than seeing all the traffic in Wireshark, we simply filter for specific traffic types. As an example, you may only want to see traffic from a specific source IP address or a destination IP address. So you can filter the traffic based on some kind of criteria. You may, as an example, only want to filter HTTP traffic or FTP traffic from a specific IP address. The Wireshark documentation gives us some examples here. So we could filter for SMTP, so simple mail transport protocol, which is TCP port 25. We could also filter for ICMP traffic. So in this example, we are looking for TCP port equal to 25, so SMTP or ICMP. So in our filter, we'll see both of those types of traffic. We could also filter for a specific subnet, so traffic in this source subnet going to this destination subnet. So show only traffic in this LAN between workstations and servers, no internet. This is called an RFC 1918 address. This is a private IP address. It's non-routable on the internet. So this will only show us traffic on the local LAN. There are many other options that you can use to filter traffic in Wireshark. But to get started, here's a GNS3 topology and let me ask you some questions. So let's say the PC on the left pings the PC on the right. I'm gonna start a Wireshark capture here. So there it is. As you can see, we're seeing a lot of traffic types. We've got EIGRP, we've got DNS, STP, all kinds of traffic types. I'll start a Wireshark capture here. And once again, we're seeing all kinds of traffic types. So we've got two Wireshark captures. This is switch one to the router, and this is the router to switch two in this GNS3 topology. So let's see if you can answer some questions. Now to help you do this, you can download these Wireshark captures. So depending on which platform you're watching this video on, just have a look at the attachments or the optional downloads and download these Wireshark captures and see if you can answer the questions yourself. Okay, so here's PC1 on the left, here's PC2 on the right. Okay, so PC1 pings PC2. Ping succeeds. Let's go into Wireshark. So this is the connection from switch one to router one, connection over here. Now in the display filter, I can type IP dot source and I can specify a source IP address of let's say 10121. Notice I see traffic with this source IP address and this destination IP address. And let me actually make that 10.1.1.1. So PC on the left. We can see a bunch of DNS requests. And then further down, we can see ICMP. Notice I can see my echo request messages. I don't see echo response. I only see echo request. So what I could do here is say or IP source equals 10.1.2.1. So what that'll give me is the ICMP messages from 10.1.1.1 to 10.1.2.1, and notice I get the reply. So source IP address here, 10.1.1.1, so echo request. Here source IP address is 10.1.2.1, it's an echo reply. That's this capture here. 
So if we look at the echo request message, notice the source MAC address is this. Source MAC address is this, destination MAC address is that. Now be careful, in the reply, we see this as the source MAC address and this as the destination MAC address. So here's the important question. Is this the MAC address of PC1? Is this the MAC address of PC2? Notice in the echo reply, we see source MAC address is this. But is it the MAC address of PC2? Well, let's have a look at the capture on the other side of the router. And here what I'll do is I'll filter for ICMP. We can see the ICMP message from 10.1.1.1 to 10.1.2.1, and then from 10.1.2.1 to 10.1.1.1. And what you'll notice here, for 10.1.1.1 going to 10.1.2.1, the destination is a VMware MAC address, source MAC address is this. That's different to what we saw on this side. Notice 10.1.1.1 going to 10.1.2.1, and 10.1.1.1 going to 10.1.2.1. Notice source MAC address is a VMware address, destination MAC address is this. Whereas on this side, source MAC address is this, destination address is a VMware address. And the reason for that, if you're not sure, is routers rewrite MAC addresses. They will rewrite the MAC address in the frame. They will recreate the frame when they route from one interface to the other. So this is the MAC address of PC1. This is the MAC address of PC2. But this and this is the MAC address of the router. And what I'll do actually at this point is stop the Wireshark captures because we're getting a lot of traffic on the network. I wanna keep those captures small. I'll save this as PC1 ICMP packet flow. And I'll do the same thing for PC2, but call this PC2 ICMP packet flow. So you can once again download these PCAP files and have a look yourself. Okay, so let's verify if what I'm saying is true. I'll open up a console to the router. So here's the Cisco router. Show IP interface brief. We can see the IP addresses of the router but let's have a look at the MAC address on gigabit 00. So on this interface, MAC address of the router is this MAC address. And going back to our Wireshark capture, notice destination MAC address is this, which is the router's MAC address on gigabit 00. The PC on the left is sending the traffic to the router because it needs to route from one interface to the other. These two PCs are on different subnets. We can see that once again by using the command ipconfig. Notice IP address is this, subnet mask is this, default gateway is the router. On this side, ipconfig, IP address is this, subnet mask is this, default gateway is the router. So, different subnets. They send the traffic to the router to do the routing from one interface to the other. So the destination MAC address that PC1 is sending traffic to is the router. And at this point, let's verify the MAC address of PC1. We can see that by using the command ipconfig slash all. Notice MAC address of the PC is this, which is what we're seeing over here. 0C29AF. 8F DC D7. So that's definitely the MAC address of PC1. What is the MAC address of PC2? We'll be able to see that in the capture on this side. PC2's IP address is this, source MAC address is this. That's the MAC address of PC2. We can see that once again if we look at PC2. So here's PC2, IP config slash all. The MAC address of the PC is this, 000C29CD1AB6. This once again is the router's MAC address on this side. We're looking at the capture from the router to the switch. 
This is an ICMP echo reply from PC2 to PC1. It's gonna send the traffic to the router. Once again, to verify that, show interface gigabit 01. This is the MAC address of the router. On this interface, that's the MAC address that we see over here. So, by using filters in Wireshark, I could filter, for instance, on source IP address or on protocol. Rather than looking at all traffic, I can filter the traffic. I could, as an example, filter for ARP. Notice when the PC wants to send traffic to PC2, the first thing it's gonna do is ARP for the router's MAC address. Here's the ARP from the PC to the router. Notice source IP address is this. Destination IP address is the router. The PC needs to know the MAC address of the router so it can send traffic to the router so that the router can route from one interface to the other. So there's a op request message. You can see in the output here it says, who has this IP address? Tell 10.1.1.1. So PC1 is asking who has IP address 10.1.1.254 and it's doing that because the default gateway of the PC is set to that IP address. Clear the screen, IP config will show us that. Notice default gateway is this. The PC is asking the router for its MAC address. The router replies, notice op reply, saying sender IP address, sender MAC address. So the PC, when oping for the router's MAC address, it gets a reply from the router and can then send traffic to the router to be routed from one subnet to another. Okay, so I'm hoping you enjoyed that. This is the beginning of filters in Wireshark, really important to know. Notice I filtered for ARP here. I could, as an example, filter for IP destination address equals 10.1.1.254, and I'll be able to see traffic going to the router. In this example, it's DNS traffic. So the PC on the left is sending a DNS request to the router. It's querying for this domain, time.windows.com. The reason the PC is doing that is because the PC is configured to use the router as the DNS server. Notice default gateway is this, DHCP server is this, but the DNS server is also set to the router. I'm not connected to the internet here, I'm using the router as the DNS server. So again, you'll be able to see traffic to a specific IP address. I could, as an example, specify source IP address equals 10.1.1.1 and, and you can do and that way or this way, IP destination address equals 10.1.1.254 and need to put a, another equal sign there. That great thing in Wireshark is it shows you when you've done it right. Notice that gives me something similar to what I saw previously. I'm getting DNS requests, so DNS query in this example, from the PC to the router. If I just wanted to filter for DNS, I could do that. And notice then I'll get responses if the router replied back to the DNS query. It doesn't do that here because the router isn't configured with these domain names. Okay, so that was a basic introduction to some filters available in Wireshark. There are many, many options. We'll look at some more as we go through the course, but try and do it yourself. Try and download the Wireshark captures and see if you can discover stuff in the network. People disappear.